Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will provide a set of pointers as to how to initially size elements prior to carrying out the detailed design. This process allows the engineer to gain an appreciation of the form of the structure and the changes that may be required if element sizes prove to be too onerous following this size estimation process. When attempting to estimate the size of an element prior to carrying out the detailed design, the span is the primary variable to consider. The other factors that have an impact on the element's design are the imposed load, permanent actions, the support conditions, and the material the element is to be made from. Simple rules of thumb that can be used to develop an understanding of how to estimate a structure's member size. By understanding this, the structural engineer will be able to spot elements that are undersized in structures before carrying out detailed design, and avoid making uneconomic decisions by oversizing elements. Additional variable that must be established at the outset of the size estimation process for concrete structures. That being the form the structure is going to adopt. This can vary from one-way spanning slabs with down stand beams to pre-stressed flat slabs. These are a selection of the most common concrete structural forms that are currently favored. The form of the structure is determined at the concept design stage of a project. This is the stage where the geometry of the structure is largely established and other key aspects of the design criteria such as soil conditions and the structure's anticipated use. Let's start with concrete slabs. The depth of a concrete slab is determined by the way it spans, in other words, one way or two way, the magnitude of load being placed upon it, and the form of the frame it sits on. If the structure is a flat slab for example, then there are no beam elements to consider, other than the beam and column strips that exist within the depth of the slab. As a first step, the depth of a slab can be estimated purely by its span depth ratio. The following table provides guidance on what these ratios are based on the type of slab being considered. In addition, the following tables are slightly more accurate estimated depths of one way spanning slabs for a down stand beam structure, a band beam structure, and a flat slab, respectively. They assume a blanket imposed load of 2.5 kN per square meter, and a superimposed dead load of 1.5 kN per square meter for single and multi spanning slabs. Next, concrete beams. There are two varieties of concrete beams. Downstand and band beam. Downstand beams that form part of a solid reinforced concrete frame are regarded as more traditional. They are more difficult to form, but do create a very robust frame. Band beams are much shallower, and are therefore easier to construct. As with concrete slabs, it is possible to estimate the depth of a beam when considering its span depth ratio. The following table provides guidance on what these ratios are based on the type of beam structure. The following tables provide more accurate estimated sizes for downstand T beams and band beams respectively. In order to use these tables, you must have calculated an ultimate line load per meter length. All depths include the thickness of the slab the beams are supporting. Next, Concrete columns. The elements that impact on the design of concrete columns are the magnitude of axial loads, and bending moments being applied to them and their length. Bending moments are dependent on pattern loading within the structure. The strength of concrete can also alter their size with higher axial loads benefiting from increased concrete strength. The location within the structure is also important as an internal column is less influenced by applied bending moments than those located at the perimeter of the structure. To estimate the size of the column requires an understanding of the interaction between the floor structure and the columns. This is due to the transfer of bending moments from one element of the structure to another. In the first instance the axial loads the column is expected to support must be determined. In addition, bending moments that are likely to be applied from the floor structure are calculated via analysis. 
This will likely include the use of moment distribution and subframe analysis methods. This is then cross-checked against the concrete strength and amount of reinforcement in the column. Unlike the slab and beam elements, columns cannot be summarized into a series of tables. Next, concrete stairs. The thickness of the stair and its landings are the only elements that are designed as far as the structural engineer is concerned. The treads are considered to be a superimposed dead load, in other words, a finish and are not therefore reinforced. The criteria that have an impact on the design of stairs are the imposed load, their span, and whether or not they have multiple spans. The following table is for an in-situ concrete staircase with an imposed load of 2 kN per square meter, which is typical for residential use. The following table is for staircases that support an imposed load of 4 kN per square meter. These are more commonly found in commercial buildings such as offices and hotels. Finally, estimating sizes of steel elements steel structures are less complex than their concrete brethren when estimating their size. They are typically simply supported structures, and hence do not have the bending moment transfer issues that are prevalent in concrete design. The exceptions to these are portal and sway frames, which do transmit moments through their connections. It is thanks to this that the rules of thumb for steel beams can be summarized into the following table. With regard to columns, their size is dependent on the number of stories they have to support, from which an initial size can be established. The following table is a rough guide to column sizes based on the height of structure they are supporting for braced structures. Let's take a worked example. Estimate the depth of floor slab of concrete structure with a column layout of 9 meters by 7 meters is to support an imposed load of 2.5 kilonewtons per square meter if a downstand beam and a flat slab structural solution were adopted. Also, for the downstand beam structure, find the estimated beam depth for a 600 mm wide beam. First, for a downstand beam solution. For multi span slab, due to 7 m span, the slab depth equals 200 mm. Beam depth, we must determine the uniformly distributed load on the beam before determining its depth. So, Dead load for a slab equals slab thickness 0.2 meters times concrete density 25 kilonewtons per cubic meter times 7 meters. This gives us a value of 35 kilonewtons per meter. We also allow finishes 1.5 kilonewtons per square meter, so 1.5 times 7 meters. This gives us a value of 10.5 kilonewtons per square meter. As a result, we have total dead load of 35 plus 10.5, which is equal to 45.5 kilonewtons per meter. Imposed load 2.5 kilonewtons per square meter times 7 meters, giving us a value of 17.5 kilonewtons per meter. Therefore, ultimate uniformly distributed load 1.25 times 45.5 plus 1.5 times 17.5. This results in a value of 83.125 kN per meter. Consequently, the beam depth is 645 mm for 9 m span. For a flat slab solution, the longest span equals 9 m, therefore, the flat slab thickness equals 300 mm. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.